please welcome Beagle Learning. Hi everyone, um, I'm Carolyn Vickers, co-founder of Beagle Learning, and I'm excited to talk with you about a big problem we're seeing. So 97% of higher education administrators say their students are prepared for the workforce, but only 40% of managers agree. So this is a really big gap that we feel like needs to be solved by training, learning, and problem-solving skills in the classroom. The problem is that faculty are often overburdened and under-trained to do this. So we've developed a skill training software that doesn't require retraining or course redesign, which takes actually hours and hours of time to completely redesign a curriculum. We've made student-led learning attainable for professors like Dr. Cook at Olivet Nazarene University. He's, spent, he's been um, lecturing for the last 30 years and felt like he needed to have a change, but he didn't know how. He felt like every single day he felt the same in the classroom. Um, but actually plugging in Beagle's inquiry learning exercises, which I'll talk about in a second, um, he felt a breath of fresh air where he was getting student feedback on a regular basis and with our AI able to actually uh, do something with this in a meaningful way for him. So um, we are a method and a, uh, and a software support. So our framework actually has students starting with a goal uh, and then choosing a question that they ask that they feel like is most important to answer to get closer to that goal. They then research uh, an answer to that question and they summarize what they've learned and then reflect on their progress so far. So very likely you all do this in your everyday jobs right now. Um, and we want students to be doing this in the classroom with the, with the current course material that professors already have. When students re repeat this process over and over, they are developing the problem solving skills and the critical thinking skills that they need to succeed in class and in um, and in the real world. So our software manages this inquiry cycle, in, inquiry cycle as we call it, and it actually reports progress to the instructors to make it really easy for the instructor to move forward. So we can plug Beagle into an existing set of lectures or projects um, so a, a, a professor can easily and seamlessly get started. Um, so I'm going to quickly uh, switch over to the, a quick demo video. Of what this is. They click into the first Beagle assignment, they can read the case study provided by the professor and think through the key points. Following the prompt, I'll reflect on what questions I think are most important to answer in order to meet my goal and satisfy the outcomes of the assignment. These questions help students to be metacognitive and engage with the skills that help them to be their own problem solver. After the students submit their question and upvote, instructors can see Beagle's analysis and grouping of their questions. Instructors use Beagle's question categorization feature to help them save time and get a bird's eye view on students' thinking and support them in coaching the students' process. Here you can see categories, questions, and a set of features that will help instructors to quickly review and explore these different file types. When you have students do these question asking activities throughout your course, you end up with a mind map where white cards show content that was discussed and gray cards show the questions that were researched and answered. This can be a really powerful tool for midterm and end of semester metacognition that allows students to reflect on what they learned and how they learned it. All right. Um, so here we go. Just skip forward there. So what you just saw was an example of the natural language processing that we use to categorize students' questions very quickly so that professors can spend five minutes, ten minutes looking at all the student data and essentially restructuring their lecture a, a little bit right before they, they start the class. And this is actually really important because we're still seeing 80% of professors lecturing when it's known that it uh, often increases dropout rates by 1.5% compared to other teaching methods. So this is a big problem. Um, so we're also uh, actually developing an AI-powered reporting system to show how students improve their questions over time and improve engagement in the class, which is a, um, if for those of you who are not in higher education, engagement or retention the, is the big ROI driver for those businesses. Um, so very quickly, um, we, we drive value for all stakeholders in higher education. For students, this is a way for them to develop the skills so that they can get hired. For professors, this is to how they can have a more engaging um, experience in the classroom. And for directors or department heads, um, they're seeing this as an efficiency for their staff to have a better quality teaching in their, in their courses. 
Um, we've had 70 courses taught, um, five pig pilots so far, and we're actually launching a new major at Arizona State University where um, inquiry learning and this method is uh, a required 18 uh, credits of that major. We're starting with a, a beachhead uh, with online business programs, a $60 million beach, uh, dollar beachhead, but we're actually expanding that, and this is an example of our, this is our roadmap for market penetration. We want to move from higher education into other areas where there, there's training and learning development happening, um, including military, K-12, and corporate. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Primarily in the STEM area? Is it in the arts or is it in the where is it? Yeah, so we've uh, we've run classes all across the gamut. So this is a pretty flexible framework. So we've we've done planetary science, business classes, arts, theater, um, anywhere, anytime where you need to be critically thinking and digging deep into a content area, um, that's where this framework works. We want students to be asking the questions that can drive their learning. Um, and we want them to learn how to learn. They can do that in any type of class. But the STEM area, the, the lab type thing, is a real learning experience that drives home the, the critical thinking and the solidifies. Does this involve any of that, or is it, how, how does that relate to, you know, or does it not? I mean, I, yeah, no, in terms of like the content of the course, or just the, the the philosophy or the idea of the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, really quick. Uh, so the framework, the framework is is it's goal driven question asking, right? So that absolutely works with the scientific method. It can work in consulting, in business, right? It can work in account management, sales. You, every one of you asks questions on a daily basis, and so that's why we are so flexible that we can plug into STEM environments to drive further discovery, researching. We work with a lot of research courses, um, but we also work with a lot of business courses, consulting courses, marketing strategy, right? Um, asking those strategic questions is a really key component that um, corporate corporate wants for, for new graduates coming out of college. Hopefully that answers, yeah. It does, but I was just thinking, I saw your graph of the billions and those are down in the K through 12. What, what's, what happens down at that area? Um, in terms of? You're talking about business and questions and sales. But at the K through 12, they have a kind of different set of problems or issues or whatever. Yeah, so I would say higher education in K through 12, our, our value proposition for that group is we, we help students think deeply and, and learn how to be critical thinkers in the class that in the content that you're already teaching them. Um, so you don't have to throw that away. Use what you already have. And I can't um, overstate how much time and money goes into redesigning curriculum. Just nobody wants to talk to you if you're going to redesign a course, right? Um, and so that's really K through 12. So K through 12 and higher ed. K through 12 has a lot of standards already set up. Um, they just have a lot more barriers to ed tech companies getting started. And so that's why we started with higher education. We had more traction in that space. But we're we are doing some pilots with uh, K through 12 school districts. Yeah. So how is this defensible? In terms of like uh, patent pen, patents and stuff like that. In terms of, for example, I finished school three years ago. So this was a approach we very nice. Oh, the framework. So anyone can sort of copy paste. Yeah, yeah, right? totally. Um, we widely share the framework. I mean, we want people to be learning how to ask better questions. Um, what's what is unique and a differentiator and proprietary to us is our natural our, our AI natural language processing and how we train people. So um, when we wait, when how we help faculty get started our process there, and then we're also looking for corporate how we would jump in and help teams actually improve their problem solving skills. So, the framework is open to use. Please. Feel free to use it. <laughs> uh, really easy question. Uh, uh, how involved is Dr. Tantin in the project? Or is he not a teacher, right? Dr. Cook? Uh, Tantin. Oh, Tantin, really? Yeah. How available? Wait, what was your question? Uh, I just said, like, how, how involved is he in the project? I know that's his son that's been Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he's, he's, I mean, I talk to him on a weekly basis. I would say he's advisory as well as uh, Lindy Elkins Tanton, who's the director at ASU. Um, but they're, I mean, they're co founders. Um, I would say they're like very heavily involved advisors, but definitely like not even part time. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. He's awesome. <laughs> you should reach out and say hi. <laughs> He'd love that. Cool. <coughs> 
Any questions, anything else that I can answer? Yeah. Have you found that there's a sweet spot in terms of the size of the groups using this? Is it like better targeted for like a 20 person class, a thousand person group? But yeah, yeah. Um, we've probably really loud. Um, we've so we've run classes of 200 students. Um, I would say, especially with online business, the the profit, the gener you know, revenue generated for them is the bigger classes are the better. So I would say we're really working to scale up from 200 to 500 students and um, supporting that. That's where the, the natural language processing becomes really, really helpful and a huge time saver for professors who do not want to scroll through giant forums. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Beagle Learning. Give us just a moment to transition here.